Hey everyone, I'm Katie Smith, President-Elect of the Restoration Industry Association, and I have the pleasure of speaking to Lori Young, Certified Restorer number 581, a member of the first graduating Certified Law Specialist class and the 2019 winner of the Women in Restoration Award. So Lori, thanks for chatting with us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Well, Katie, thank you for that uh, kind introduction. Um, so my name is Lori Young, and I work for, uh, I work with uh, for Bartwood Construction. I'm the president here. Bart was located in Southern California. My husband and I are second owners to this company. Uh, we were the uh, previous owner's exit plan, and we've uh, been at the helm for a little over 10 years now. So uh, serving the Southern California area, we are a full service restoration company for fire, water, small, medium, large loss, and contents. Nice. And so tell me just how long have you been in this industry and uh, what made you want to earn your CR and when did you do that? Oh boy. Okay. So I've been in the industry since uh, 1999 for insurance, insurance repair work. Um, I earned my CR in 2011. So what approximately 11, 12 years after I entered the industry, I had a lot of support from the previous owner of this company, where if I wanted to get educated, he was willing to uh, put out a little funding and, and time uh, to allow me to do that. So I got my CR in, uh, in 2011. Nice. Side note here, we were in the same class and I had the, the honor right. of spending a week with you in Virginia. We had, um, our class was Marty King's last in-person CR class. So It was, we and it was one toughest things I've ever done. And I, and I remember that now you being in the class with me and you finished your exam much quicker than I did. Well, I was so. racing my husband to, to finish first before him. So, you know, oh my gosh, a little competition between the <laughs> we were the only two females in there. And I know for a fact that you finished your exam way before I did. <laughs> well, um, anyway, at least I was like, at least I passed because the man, if I fail, Anyway, me so. too. I just didn't <laughs> want to do it again. So, so Thank during, you both passed <laughs> during uh, the CR class uh, or any maybe even the CLS class. Do you remember having an aha moment um, during any of these sessions where you saw a way for your business to improve because of what you were learning at the time? You know, I really did. I think I think that uh, I think just being able to say that I was like a certified restorer and now recently knew the contents loss specialist designation, um, all of that just breeds confidence to being in the field. You know, I, you know, I, I always wondered, you know, I don't know how much weight it carries with, like with insurance carriers or whatever, but over the years, it's like the more that you say it and the more that you use those credentials when you're called on to consult or, or whatever, it's just like the more experience you get having those titles behind you gives you the, gives you confidence when you're in a room, whether you're in a room with, uh, doesn't matter, uh, adjusters, public adjusters, other contractors, whatever, you do get a certain uh, amount of confidence just knowing that you completed it. So absolutely. When, well, I just remember going to one of my first RIA shows and seeing the, the little um, banners on people's name tags with the certification names on there. And that's kind of how I first said, what is that? And then I started looking on the website. Who introduced you to the advanced des designations of RA? You know, I'm not so sure I remember who introduced me to it. Um, I came to one of the conferences and I just kind of got enamored. It was, uh, it, it was a real, uh, it was a funny thing, but there were, there were some people around that I so admired and it's like, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be one of the cool people <laughs> that yeah, I would see. You are. <laughs> like an RIA. I want to say I, I could name names. Um, I could definitely name names, but I would look around and I'd see like these people that I so admired in the industry and I considered them like the cool people and I wanted to be amongst them. And it took me a little while, but pretty soon um, I was absolutely amongst them and they've become some of my uh, peers in the industry. And I, and I was like all excited to hang out with and, and, and be one of those people that I just 
you know, totally respect it. I still hang out with them and just feel like I'm like privileged to be with the cool people. So, well, and they I'm were the, they were the ones they were the ones that had people. the education. Let's what was hear, that? Let's hear the names. Go ahead and tell us. Oh gosh, Art Johnson, Mark Springer. Um, there were so many more. All yeah. I know. Oh, oh, I remember. Um, he worked for a sport at David. Oh gosh, darn it. Anyways, they, we're talking 2011. It was a while ago, so cut me a little yeah. slack. All I know is they were just, they were fantastic people. And I, and I wanted to, uh, and I was like, I wanted to know them and I wanted to hang out with the cool people. So well, that was you know, now there's a whole new generation of people uh, attending our shows and, and learning more about RIA. And you're one of those people that they look up to. And so now that you're in the position of being, you know, one of the cool people. <laughs> what what kind of advice do you it's have? It's so silly. It's so no, silly, it's but it was not. so true. I was like, oh man, I want to know those people. Yeah. You're 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 known and respected. And um I, I just I'm gonna ask on behalf of all the people that want to know what advice do you have to someone starting on the path to advanced designations? You know, it can be a, t it can be a tough road. And I remember when I got my, when I got all of my information for my CR, I panicked because I just thought there's no possible way for me to be prepared to take this exam. I think we had six, it, everything was done a little bit differently back then, but there was just no possible way for me to think that I was going to take an exam. It was something like eight weeks away and pass. And I actually tried to give it all back. I said, you can keep my money. Let me keep the material. Let me have a year to study and then I'll take it next year. And I was told, no, if they said, no, 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 Lori, I remember Cindy, she said, you can do this. And, and she said, you can't, um, if you pull out, you have to give all the material back. And I was like, well, how do I study if I give all the material back? And you know, my, my biggest issue was I'm a contents person. I'm really not a structure person by nature. And so I did not think that I could learn enough about structure to pass that exam. So it was, uh, it was difficult. I did it. I felt good about doing it, but it really pushed me to learning things that I probably otherwise would not have learned. And just to be like, uh, just to be a lot more well-rounded in a whole claim and not just, you know, one certain topic. I remember you so many times saying, I'm a contents person. It was especially during the time of calculating board fee. And you were like, I'm oh my a gosh. contents person. <laughs> roofing, right. Roofing, carpet installation. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> but you did it. You absolutely did it. And, and tell me, what was your favorite, favorite experience you had while earning your certified restorer? I don't know if there was a favorite experience. Um, because I just really counted it as one of the toughest things I've ever done because it was done way differently back then. Now you get the, you get the pillars. There's probably, uh, there's probably a lot more education along the way. That's going to make that final, uh, that final CR exam moment a little bit easier than it was back in 2011. Absolutely. Um, but I, so I don't know about my, my favorite moment, but I, I do remember uh, I was hanging out with, um, hanging out with just a few people real consistently that week and the test was over and really you walked away and you had no idea if you did okay or you passed right. and everybody headed like the, the gentleman that I was hanging out with, uh, a few of them, we all headed to like this bar area or something afterwards and everybody was kind of miserable. You know, maybe the ones that knew that they did okay were fine, you know, but then some of them were, some of us were just like, oh man, I have no clue. Like I could toss a coin. So now we had to, now we're in the waiting game to see if yeah. we passed. And I, and I said, that's it. Get up. We're not going to do this. Like it's over. We either passed or we didn't. And we all got in a rental car and we were back in uh, Maryland and we went to the Monuments by Moonlight tour. I said, I'll drive. I'm the uh, designated designated driver. We all got in a rental car and we went and we enjoyed the city a little bit and just, you know, and I just appreciated that group of people so much that kind of helped me try to study and everything that week. So, so that, that was a, that was a fun moment. Um, just 
just, I think the relief that like, okay, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We did our best and here we are. So I, I enjoyed that week as far as um, people just coming together and studying together and really trying to, to help each other out if we had a weak spot, a weak area. So, and then I was helping them on contents. Absolutely. So just as much as structure was a struggle for me, contents for them was a struggle too. So. Yeah, we were building relationships. It was fun. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we talked about you saying I'm a contents person. And at the time there was, there, you know, we had our science and theory course, but there was really no other place to go for uh, really intense contents training, but there is now. So tell me um, what role you played in developing the CLS curriculum. Uh I guess Art and I were asked uh, asked to to be really involved in that. We were authors of chapters in the CLS, and then ultimately um, just brought everything together to be able to teach it. Um, we did, in fact, teach it without anyone ever giving us the answers to the exam. They didn't want us to teach to the exam, but that makes it pretty difficult to know what to concentrate on class as well. And uh, we actually um, put it together, taught it for the first time in person and turned around and sat and took the exam with the class. And uh, that was it. I mean, and then now we're, uh, we're both uh, co-instructors co of the CLS program currently, so. Awesome. Well, Lori, thank you so much for everything that you do for the RIA and for sharing your experience with us. And I uh, can't wait to share your story with the industry and hope to see you in person very soon. Thanks, you too, Katie. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.